All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we are going to be talking about the process of caprifying or pollinating our figs. And I've really gotten into this because last year the fig hunter, David Burke, and his wife Priscilla, that's what they call themselves, the fig hunter, they sent me a box of figs last year that I did a tasting on. You can go back and watch the video, by the way, that we did uh, last summer. These were figs that they sent to me overnight that uh, were wild figs grown in California. And they also were caprified, pollinated. And I could not believe the flavors that I was experiencing in these fruits. And to the point where I had felt in that moment deprived. I have been growing figs for almost 10 years. And knowing what I know today, I could have very easily have been hand pollinating or pollinating my figs almost since the beginning. And because I wasn't doing that, I feel deprived. You know when you guys start growing food for the first time and you taste all of the different vegetables and fruits that you grow and you say to yourself, oh my goodness, I can't believe how much better that is than the grocery store. Or I can't believe how much better it is than what I've been eating my entire life. I feel the same way about these figs and that I've been eating them now and growing them a very special figs at uh, the highest quality I could possibly achieve here in my humid climate in Philadelphia. And I still feel deprived. I still feel like I've been missing something because when I pollinate all the figs here on my property, I'm going to do at least two figs of every variety and find out which ones are going to change the flavor of to a significant degree. It really does, by the way on specific varieties, it changes the flavor almost two to four times greater. I mean, I'm not kidding. Like if you took an average or above average tasting fig and you pollinated it, and that is of the right variety that can react in the right way, it could turn into something incredible. And uh, this to me is gonna change the way that serious fig growers grow figs forever. Normally, Fig varieties are self-pollinating. There's four main types. There's the Capra fig, there's the San Pedro types, the Smyrnas. All three of those, uh, well, at least the Smyrnas and the San Pedros require pollination to some degree, or they won't even ripen. And without the fig wasp in California or in the Mediterranean, you will never really actually ripen those reliably outside of areas without the fig wasp. But uh, this is becoming a thing that everybody can do. And the steps that I'm gonna show you guys in this video is something that all of us can do. And it doesn't require a specific level of expertise. This is rather simple. And it's gonna, again, be a standard practice that we're all going to do for not just the San Pedro types, the Smyrna types that require the pollination, but also for the common figs that all of us grow for the most part in, uh, in majority. So. Let me show you now some of the things that we're gonna need here. Um, I'm gonna bring you guys through this entire process, but really quickly, this right here is just a mug filled with pollen that I received from David and Priscilla Burke. They had sent me capra figs, which are male figs. They were grown in California from wild trees and they contain pollen. So it's important if we wanna be doing this ourselves, we have to just grow a capra fig actually. Once you get the capra figs from the profici crop, which are technically the crop that's produced at the beginning of the season on last year's growth, they're very similar to Breba, they have pollen within them. You cut them in half. I'll demonstrate this in the video very soon. And we just simply, through a fine mesh strainer, start tapping the figs to get the pollen out. It's almost like shaking the figs. We're just tapping them. You can use a knife. I use my fingers and you'll see the pollen go through the fine mesh strainer into this mug. Then I filled up the mug here with water and mixed it up really well. This incorporates the pollen in the water really well. And you can see the pollen actually in the water. The pollen's white, by the way, it's just cloudy. And then what I do is I take my syringe, which already has some water pollen solution in it, and I just simply get the, the solution here in the syringe. And what we're gonna do essentially, the process is all I do is make a hole into the side of the fig. I try to aim for the very center of the fig with one needle. And then I use the other needle, the other syringe 
for going in through the eye. And I go in, squirt the solution in there, and after, because I made a second hole, or even really coming out through the eye, you can see essentially droplets of water. Once you know, you'll know that you're done based on the amount of water that's coming out. If there's just one single drop, basically you know you're good. Let me show you now the process of preparing our syringe. Step one of this process is actually just getting the right syringe. And uh, it took me a while to actually get the right syringe because I didn't know what I was looking for. Uh, the specifications online in this process, there's not really many uh, guides on hand pollinating figs. And of the ones that are available, at least to my knowledge, don't specify the, the syringe. I'm gonna put a link down in the description and you guys can go there and check that out and see the specifications of exactly what you'll want. And uh, once we put the pollen here into this mug, we fill it up with some water and then we're gonna suck up that solution. And as we suck it up here with the syringe, uh, we need to be able to suck up the pollen with the water. And the pollen is just a little too big for smaller needles. So you need to get the right size needle there. That's really critical. So that's step one. Step two, is we're gonna take our fig here, our capper figs, and we're gonna cut them in half. And hopefully they have pollen in them. These were sent to me by the fig hunter. Shout out to David Burke and his wife Priscilla. They're wonderful people. And they are essentially sending me these figs and they're selling them as well. If you're interested in buying them, I think they're, they're selling a package of them for about $50 a package. You can use my promotional code. I'm partnering up with them. Definitely check them out and their website if you're interested in, in trying this uh, experiment along with me. So there's the, the capper figs, you cut them in half, then we're gonna basically turn them upside down and we're gonna start tapping the top into our mug. On top of the mug is a fine mesh strainer. People use these for all kinds of things. I've recently been using them for cocktails and you're just gonna start tapping the, uh, the top of the fruit. Now, you'll see very closely, if there is pollen, you'll notice right away that there's pollen in here. Um, also, there's di very different quantities in here, I've noted, um, depending on the capper fig, from one fig to the next, from one capper fig to the next, it just, uh, you know, it's not always the same result. But you'll see the pollen right away. Then the next thing I would recommend is actually opening the fig up here as if you were like quartering it, really trying to open that up, and then hit it again and start tapping. And this is really, I think, where a lot of the pollen comes out. So I would just keep doing this until you're not really seeing any more pollen. You may need to have very good eyes to see the pollen and also be in very specific lighting. So if you're not seeing pollen, um, you know, it's tough to see and obviously the lighting I think does matter. All right, so now we've gotten all the pollen out of our figs, we've put it into this white mug and now the last thing to do is really just to incorporate it with water. Once we incorporate this really well with water, we can uh, take our syringe, uh, uptake the solution here, and our really our process of preparing the syringe will be complete. But it's really difficult, I've found, to incorporate the, the pollen with the water with just using a fork or a whisk is what other people have suggested. Now, I don't know exactly the amount of water, the ratio of water to pollen that's supposed to be used. Uh, I think that's probably pretty unclear. This is really an experiment. Um, there's not a whole lot of information out on this technique. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it to what I think is right. Now, I'm also gonna take this blender here, this handheld blender, and I'm gonna blend up this water. And I find this does a much better job at incorporating the pollen with the water than a whisk or a fork. And so I would recommend getting one of these if you don't have one. There's a lot of purposes for this. I'll put one, a, a link to that in the description of the video. Now, as the water is swirling, I really think it's best to uptake this water as quickly as we can. Sometimes some things get stuck in the hole of the needle. But as it's swirling, I find, because I don't know if the pollen sinks, I don't know if the pollen floats, just trying to get a decent ratio as it's swirling, that's probably the best time that it's incorporated, um, the pollen and the water. So if it's just standing still like this, I imagine a lot of the pollen and water has maybe separated again. 
All right, so now let's actually do the pollination process. And you'll note that I actually have two syringes, one with the solution in it and the other one that's empty. The second syringe that's empty is there to create the second hole on the side of the fig. So essentially here, I'm gonna come in from the side and I'm going to just very easily go through the side, aim for the middle, and insert the second syringe like so. Then take it out. You'll notice that there's sap that comes after you insert the syringe. Um, that sap unfortunately builds up in the syringe that you use. And so you're not gonna be able to actually use the solution because the needle will be clogged. Now the next part of this is actually to take your syringe with the solution in it, aim for the eye of the fig where there'll be very little amounts of fig sap, if any, and if done correctly. You don't wanna go in too far. Uh, you're aiming again for the void of the fig, the center of the fruit. If you cut it open, you'll see the void uh, to know exactly where you're aiming. And so then you just start squeezing the syringe. And what you'll see immediately when I squeeze is water pop through either where the location of the eye is, where we went in with the syringe, or at the second hole that we created. And that's giving me pretty much 100% indication that we're done. We finished the pollination process there uh, in entirety. Um, and we have, and should have, I should say, a successful pollination. Now the next step, and what I'm doing here, is marking every fig that I pollinate. Because I'm not pollinating every single fig. Um, and I want to know which ones I did pollinate versus the ones I didn't pollinate to see what the actual flavor increase is. I'm doing two figs per variety. So every variety I'm growing here in the yard, whether it's an in-ground fig, a potted fig, I've pretty much pollinated almost all of them now at this point. Two of each minimum. The varieties that are San Pedro's or Smyrna's, I've pollinated uh, most of them, if not all of them, that have not already dropped off the trees. Um, that'll give us a good indication right there again, of what we pollinated. That's the video here, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Check out uh, you know, the FigHunter.shop. That's their website. David and Priscilla Burke are selling these figs. If you guys wanna go along and try this process with me, I would highly recommend it. You're not gonna wanna go back. All right, guys, take care. Catch you for the next one.